Network, Bellator MMA now presents a feature fight in the flyweight division, set for three five-minute rounds, introducing the blue corner first. At five foot four, weighing in 131.7 pounds, her professional record, 10 wins, six losses, one draw, fighting out of Oakhurst, New Jersey, Deanna Vitamin D Bennett. And across the cage, her adversary, fighting out of the red corner, at five foot six, weighing in 125 and one half pounds, the former world title challenger tonight makes her Bellator debut, bringing 13 professional victories, seven defeats. By way of Okinawa, Japan, she fights out of San Diego, California, Liz Gorilla Carmouche. In charge, your referee, Todd Anderson. Todd Anderson, our referee, you check out the tweet from her scissor sister, and I will tell you the story. When Alima Lay first came into the gym, Liz Carmouche was working the front desk and signed her up. Alima Lay is Ready? the champion. Ready? They go hard in training. Ready? Will they fight for the title one day? We will see. We are underway. Carmouche in the red gloves, Bennett in the blue gloves. Nice little head move by Liz Carbucci. She started off that sequence. Born in Louisiana, grew up in Okinawa, Japan. Her father was in the Air Force. She was there from age three until age 20. Nice go behind. Beautiful takedown. Liz Carbucci is one of the physically strongest ladies that I've ever seen fight. She said, in my mind, I'm coming in here with a clean slate. And just like everyone else, I have to work my way up the ranks before I fight Oliva. If the opportunity comes sooner, that's great, but I'm totally cool with putting in the work. And it starts right here against vitamin D, Deanna Bennett. She's got a very interesting position. This is something that a lot of jiu-jitsu practitioners are starting to do, taking the back, utilizing the lockdown when they have the back. Watch that back of the head. Find that ear. Black belt in 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu. She's in that twister position setup, kind of. But Deanna, but Deanna Bennett also said, though, is that I'm comfortable on the ground. I'm, that's where I actually I'm special at. So she felt very good there. She was able to get out of the lockdown and get back to her feet. Nicely done by her. Most of this camp in Utah for Deanna Bennett. She is trained with Jeremy Horn in the past, part of the Militich team way back in those glory days with the champions like Jens Palver, obviously Matt Hughes. Yep. Let me help Tim you. Sylvia. Jeremy Horn, I haven't heard that name in a while. Right, buddy Gumby. Man, Mr. 100 and 200 fights or something. Yep. <laughs> Jeez. Just probably one of the nicest guys I think you'll ever meet. Absolutely. One of the nicest guys and one of the great brains when it comes oh, yes. to fighting MMA. Of course, Pat Militich, a champion as well. The Croatian sensation. They break. Midway point of round number one. Both women have very good grappling skills. I like to remind people, like, their records are very similar, but their level of competition has been completely different. You're absolutely right. You can see that Bennett's giving her a little bit too much respect right now. She needs to go out there and try and push Liz around a little bit more and actually throw more than just one. And Liz Carmouche has fought a who's who's list in women's mixed martial arts. Liz Carmouche went five rounds with a woman that I think is one of the best mixed martial artists I've ever seen, in Valentina Chevchenko. She went five rounds with her. You can stay five rounds with Valentina, you're special. And she beat her back in 2010. Exactly. Spot Alexis Davis. You should take. Nice little setup inside leg kick with the overhand right by Liz. Jessica Andrade and tonight, Deanna Bennett. 
also fought Ronda Rousey. I remember that. Yeah, I remember that very yeah. well. Had her back early. Watch your face. Watch your face. Stance on the bicep right there. Good. 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 Good head position by Liz in that situation because you can see what Deanna is looking for. She's got the wizard on the outside, looking to step her leg across. That head position is keeping her from doing it. Liz is physically strong. You can just see it out. She got reversed with her back to the fence, and she just lifted her underhook and put Bennett's back to the fence. And what Deanna's doing is Deanna's actually lifting her feet up off of the ground to move her around. Which is it's a smart move, smart technique to use when you have someone that's that strong and trying to press you down. Liz Carmouche fought for the Strike Force title after just eight months of training back in 2011 against the great Marlos Kunin. That was a beautiful little roll through that, that uh, Liz Carmouche did, but she just couldn't end up on the top position. Yep. Nice job by Deanna to do it. Good start to this flyweight fight. Thank you. Round two. Who gets round one? Josh. Uh, I think Liz Carmouche, she had a big slam in the beginning. She had good positioning. She was uh, beating uh, Bennett to the punches. I thought she did a great job. John? You know, it's amazing that Josh can actually learn. I'm enjoying it. I am enjoying it. No, he's absolutely right. I like asking both of you guys so I can get you guys in a fight. <laughs> I'm trying to absorb much, as much knowledge as I can because John's 76 this week. Uh, there you go. Somewhere on there, so. Yeah. It's amazing. I, I, I gain a year every week with Josh. Yes, <laughs> yes you do. <laughs> There's that little fake kick, inside kick, and then coming over the top with uh, Liz with the right hand. Nice job. That means I was at your 50th 26 years ago, John? Not a kick face. Something like that. You talked about the level of competition being very different, Josh, but as this fight continues, you can see the level of confidence rising drastically for Deanna Bennett. Yeah, but you don't want to get overconfident with this car. Which one For sure. Mistake and you'll get picked up, slammed, you know, submitted along those lines. Yeah. Well, Josh is right as far as the level of competition, but you can look at Deanna and she, she has fought some really high level good lady fighters. And, you know, she's got, gone against Miranda uh, Maverick twice. She's an outstanding fighter. She's fought like Roxanne Modafari. You know, Jody Escobar, she's been in there with some really good, talented ladies. Nice takedown by Dan Bennett. Beat Juliana Pena way back in 2013. Oh. Opened her career 8 and 0. Oh. This is where Deanna Bennett said that she felt really comfortable with Liz Carmouche. She is comfortable here because she has got very good base and positioning on the ground. She's also hits. got six more pounds. <laughs> well, you know what? Right now, that does make a difference. Liz throwing the old school heel kick, but not to the, the back, but more to the, the thigh, which is, I actually really love that. I do that from the standing, or I used to do that from the standing position. Well, she can throw it from anywhere now. That's legal. <laughs> Midway point of this fight, Bennett trying to do damage on top. You talked about her father being a police officer. Deanna said, I have my father's badge. I carry it with me to all my fights. It is my number one most prized possession because it means everything. John, I talked with Liz this week. We did a couple interviews with her. We plus in the fighter meetings. Do you look at this fight also as possibly like a, a gotcha fight? It's your first fight in a new promotion, new contract, all these things. Deanna Bennett's tough. She's well-rounded all the way around. Somebody that hasn't fought the level of competition of you, but then there's the jitters of the fight coming in. I look at it, like we're seeing this position right now, and Deanna Bennett looks phenomenal right now. Right now, I know she lost the first round, but she's controlling this grappling situation in this, at this moment. Right now, in my opinion, Liz is allowing herself self to stay on the ground in positions where she has the opportunity to try to get up and get out, but she's not going that. Right now, she's going for that elevator, she's going for the leg. She's got her in that heel hook. She's got a good chance at it right now. Then it's trying to roll that, out of trouble. Just create that pressure. She needs to keep Use those moving. legs. She needs to keep circling and pushing on the butt, or at least yep. coming up and hugging the head. She has that heel, though. This is also a very dangerous position. We've seen before in the past, when people that hold on to leg locks too long, they're able to get countered and 
and well, she hit did. just like this. She couldn't get her right leg activated in that, and that's what allowed Deanna to get herself at least up right now. Liz needs to figure out either I, if I can utilize my legs to push her back, I can stay with my submission. If she's getting on top, I gotta let it go like she's doing. Nice job by Deanna Bennett. As a corner, though, I, in my mind, I'm thinking, Liz, you should have used that when you felt like you didn't have it. Kick her away and get back to your feet. She allowed Deanna Bennett to get back to the top position. 30 seconds on the clock here in round number two. John, back of the head. right now, how would you score that, though? She was threatening the submissions. But Deanna, I know, is I feel like she's winning the round because she's been on top doing some work, doing some striking. Well, how would you score that as of right now? Well, as far as just that sequence, obviously you're going to give credit to the grappling of her going for the submission. You give nothing to Deanna as far as the defense. But overall in the round, striking has been the biggest element. That's what you're going to go off of. Good job, ladies. Third and final round, five minutes remain. Liz Carmouche's corner said, you need to win this round. Well, John and I talked about confidence. You piggybacked on it, but yeah, I get what you're saying. I'm gonna go back and watch that later. I think I brought it up. There's big John's scorecard. Beautiful push kick. J-O-H-N. Pride, 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 You heard Deanna Bennett's corner tell her between rounds, get after her, I told you you could do this. You knew you could do it now. Get out there, get the takedown, and dominate her like you did in the second. Take a look at some of the numbers. A lot of strikes thrown. Percentage just a little bit better for Deanna Bennett. Biggest problem with strike stats is you're not, those are not saying which were big shots, which were little ground and pound shots. So you've got to be educated saying the shots that someone is landing on their feet are always going to be given a lot more weight than the ones that are landed that are little body body heads on the ground. Deanna Bennett doing a very good job on trying to get that wrist control. This old move where the fighters, they switch their legs against the fence to try to break the grip. I remember the first time I saw that was with Dan Henderson. It, it, guys would try to take him down or get on the leg and he would switch his hips and it would, people got confused not knowing what to do. It changes the dynamic of where your hip, is, uh, your hip pressure is. Well, Deanna's utilizing that Kimura grip to try to defend against Liz getting her back. And now you're seeing Liz switching that grip on her. Deanna Bennett. Did you see how Deanna Bennett's, uh, her feet are not against the fence. Liz, what she could do is start sweeping those feet back, hooking them and, and sweeping them back. So she sits Deanna Bennett right to her butt. Whether she does an inside or outside hook on one of those legs, she sweeps one of them out, she's gonna go down. Not always, but yeah, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> If we did it to you, John, you would go down. For yeah, sure. Definitely. Go down. I go down without anybody doing it. <laughs> Very true. She's following her coach's instructions between rounds. I I'm very impressed with Deanna Benton right now. Don't grab it. Liz going for the switch. Nice switch. Nice switch into it. Deanna needs to stand up and start wrist control and start fighting the wrist and start getting back to her feet, breaking the grip. Liz doing a good job. What she needs to do is sag Deanna Bennett to that right side. She needs to watch Don't Phil Davis it. and the way he sags people down. Yeah. Phil Davis with a split decision win last night in the rematch against Leota Machida. Two minutes remain in the Bellator debut for both Liz Carmouche and Deanna Bennett. But John, this is what I was talking about. There's a lot of nerves that go into this, and I think this is a very, ooh, very nice, nice job transition. Job taken the back by Liz. She's on the neck now, too. That's in tight, oh, that's John. Deep. Let go, let go, that's it, that's it. It's over. You okay? What a finish. Needed, got it, and the smile. Good work, ladies. Bit of relief as well. Needless to say, John. That's what makes submission Three, so special. 17. Take a look at the setup. She's been working for that takedown, then jumps to the back, gets both hooks in, and as soon as she does, look at where Deanna's hands are. They're on the ground, meaning that her neck is open. She gets the arm around the neck, immediately palm to palm, squeeze, tight. 
Nice submission and beautiful first win for Liz Carmouche in the Bellator cage. Like John said, the hand on the ground means that you're not defending the actual choke, and she stayed in that tripod position, which means that she didn't pick a side to start defending. There was no reason for her to stay there, and that's what led to her getting the, hand, the arm underneath the neck. Liz Carmouche, a winner by submission. It is her first win by submission in over eight years, and she's victorious in her Bellator debut. Inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end by way of a rear naked choke. The tap officially, three minutes, 17 seconds, round number three by submission. The winner, Liz Gorilla Carmouche. Bellator MMA now presents tonight's co-main event live on Showtime. We're set for three five-minute rounds in the flyweight division. Introducing the blue corner, at five foot two, weighing in 126 pounds even. Her professional record includes 22 wins, eight losses from Jaú, Sao Paulo, Brazil. Presenting Vanessa Porto. And across the cage, her adversary fights out of the red corner. At five foot six, weighing in 125.4 pounds, the two-time, two-weight class former world title challenger stands with 14 professional victories, seven defeats. By way of Okinawa, Japan, she fights out of San Diego, California, Liz Gorilla Carmouche. And the referee in charge, Kevin McDonald. Kevin McDonald will oversee Back. this flyweight matchup between the number three, number two ranked, excuse me, Liz Carmouche and Bellator MMA newcomer Vanessa Ready Porto. Ready to fight? Let's go. The bell and round one, the current Bellator MMA flyweight champion, Juliana Velasquez. It's Carmouche in the red gloves, Porto in the blue. out of the southpaw stance, pawing away. Outside, calf kick delivered by Carmouche, body kick by Porto. Carmouche moving to her right consistently. Liz is really trying to set up, she's trying to step outside of the lead foot of Vanessa Porto to set up a straight left hand right down the pipe. to Porto, who misses with a wild right hand. Liz switching back and forth from orthodox to southpaw, a lot more than we've ever seen her do it before. She obviously saw something in watching Vanessa Porto that she believes this is a good tactic for her. Porto trained by her husband, Pedro Carmouche. Member of Team or 10th Planet San Diego in the arena. She said she spent most of her training camp at the arena, coming off a splashy Bellator debut last September, defeating Deanna Bennett at Bellator 246. That submission victory was the first time in nine bouts that Carmouche did not hear the judges' scores. That always makes you feel good as a fighter when you finish the fight. She had good moments in that fight, she had a hard Second round, in the third round she came out and she really did a great job of getting the back of Deanna Bennett and locking in that rear naked choke to get that submission victory. That was super important to her as a fighter for her confidence in coming into Bellator in her debut fight. Yeah, her third win via submission. She has six knockouts as well. Porto, meanwhile, half of her 22 wins have come via submission, 11 to go along with four knockouts, but very much a Cautious start here, collecting that all-important data, John, through the first half of the opening round. Yeah, still a, f a lot of feeling out by both. You see the movement by Liz Carmouche. There she goes stepping back into a southpaw stance. Porto says that at the end, it's the determination that she possesses that separates her from the competition. 
Carmouche familiar with Vanessa Porto because she helped train or spar with Pearl Gonzalez when Gonzalez was facing Porto for the Invicta title. Well, this is a little bit unusual for me in watching a Liz Carmouche fight because normally Liz is the one. She has the shorter reach, she's the shorter fighter, and she's trying to get inside on people. She's okay. trying to keep Vanessa Porto at range, and it's working for her right now. Porto delivered a body kick. Minute and a half remaining in the first round. So she is trying to set up that straight left hand. So uh, Bellator MMA fan trying to do a little uh, matchmaking. Of course, the number one ranked uh, women's flyweight is Alima Leigh McFarlane. I'm sure she would love a rematch with Juliana Velasquez, suffering her first loss against the new 125 pound champion as Porto lands a jab on Carmouche. Carmouche making the most of the real estate in the cage. Porto attacking the lead leg of Carmouche going from Southpaw to Orthodox, as you mentioned, John, now from the Southpaw stance. And Porto really attacking the inside of the lead leg from the lefty position. Porto starting to feel her range, starting to come inside with kicks, punches. She's been a little bit off on the targeting. You know, she's basically looking towards throwing those shots towards that chest area. Porto tries to hunt down Carmouche at the bell. On the big Bellator MMA stage, she says fighting for Bellator is a dream come true. After dominating Invicta, where she was the 125 pound champion. Talk about uh, adjustments you would like to see happen in the second round for both fighters, John. I, I wanna, if I'm gonna go with adjustments for Vanessa Porto, I need more out of you. I need you to start throwing. If you want to be in this stand-up position, then I need you to start throwing more shots, give her more to look at, more combinations. And if I'm looking at Liz Carmouche, that's what I want to see at times. Use your hands, more combinations, and if you can get into her body, I want you to take her to the ground and use your ground and pound because it's devastating. So they're busy using those short knee strikes in the clinch. See Vanessa trying to frame out on it. Liz is so physically strong at 125 pounds. It's going to take a lot of movement for Vanessa to get Liz off her. She needs to step away, to bring that underhook up higher. It's going to be tough with where Liz's arm is right now. Carmouche one and one with UFC 125 champion Valentina Shevchenko. But now designs on the Bellator MMA title. And this is her second fight under the Bellator MMA banner as Porto putting her weight. And not only Porto, Porto oh, looking, looking for a choke. I was gonna say, she's looking to put her arms into that locked choke, but with where Liz is at, she can pick her legs up and bring her down, so. Carmouche creates some separation, has that left knee waiting to be uncoiled, there it is. Midway point of the round and the fight. And when you're looking at those, they're not real exciting, but those knees to the thighs, it's a Charlie horse. Yeah, you it get hurts. introduced to the horse named Charlie, so yeah, as you just it, said. And it just makes your movement now, when you get free, now your movement is a little bit harder. Your legs are heavier. So all this adds up. This is wow. actually good work by Liz Carmouche. A lot of 
Little things happening here at close distance, John. Yeah, I admit it's not exciting work, but it is damaging, and it, it actually has an effect in the fight, so that's why fighters go towards it to try to, now I'm going to break you down a little bit, then I'm going to try to attack you again. Under two minutes left in the second, and Porto finally creates separation. Ramush from the southpaw stance, Porto coming for it, applying the jab, attacking the lead leg on the outside. Counter right by Carmouche. Right hand thrown by Porter. Counter right by Carmouche. Body kick delivered by Girlzilla. That kick was checked by Carmouche. It was a nice check, but if you're going to check, then throw that left yeah, hand. Yeah, and the corner said it. You got to counter that. We have reached the final minute of the second round. Porto looking to make an immediate impact in her Bellator MMA debut, while Liz Carmouche wants to show the world that, yeah, she is still very viable as a title challenger. And it's been a remarkable career for Liz Carmouche and the, the part of uh, history that she represents in mixed martial arts in so many ways, John. Absolutely, and you talk about, you know, special people in mixed martial arts. She's such a good person. Yes. She's so fun to be around. She's got a great personality. Been calling her, well, called her first fight a decade ago with the strike force, and we've seen her evolution. And here now, final 15 seconds of the second round, and Carmouche was moving forward, now moving laterally, and Porto on the hunt, but unable to make contact as we go to round three. Championship conversation. Final five minutes of this flyweight battle. Carmouche in the red gloves, Porto in the blue. Vanessa Porto really needs to figure out a way to close that distance. She's having a hard time with the range right now that Liz Carmouche is deploying with her footwork. She's got to figure out a way to cut it off and take a step in to land the shot. She's got to start throwing. She's got to do something in combination that's going to affect Liz Carmouche. What about Carmouche and her offensive strategy in these final four minutes? You know, really, you look and you go, it's you know not the most exciting as far as you know what she's doing, she, but she's just controlling the fight from yep. the outside, and she's landing. You know, little tiny shots here and there. That was a nice kick to the body by Porto. That's what Porto needs to do. She needs to close that distance and put the pressure on Liz. If this fight is fought at range, we've already seen Liz Carmouche is the one that's going to be leading the dance. Porto allowing Carmouche to just circle. That's it when you're falling. See right there, she, she's following. Her. Instead of taking a step and cutting her off and taking a step forward and throwing off of it. An effective counter strike by Carmouche and then lands the one two, splitting the guard with the right hand down the middle. Porto flashes the jab, doesn't follow up. Kicks exchanged. Carmouche getting the better of that one. Yes, he did. Two minutes gone in the final round. I'm just not seeing that sense of urgency on Vanessa Porto that I want to see. She's got to feel when you're in that position, if, even if you say, I don't know if we won the, that round, well, then just assume you lost it. And you got to get going. You got to do something to change the, the aspect of the way this fight is oh. being fought. Nice job. Yeah, Carmouche drops down and looks for the takedown. That was a trip by the cage, but it actually yeah, worked, it worked out. It was a fortuitous yeah. trip. Very quick. She's got the hands on the legs. What she wants to do is try to bring those hands together. 
or bring her head up so she can slide her head up, go towards the back. Final two minutes. Switch to a single leg of this fight. Try to bring her out from the cage. Pull that leg out, swing her down. And Carmouche, with dogged determination, trying to secure the takedown. And this final minute, 45 seconds of the fight. This did try to swing her out, and Porto's just strong enough and good enough to understand that position and defend against it. And Porto delivering some, some short knee strikes, but needs to create separation, needs to deliver an offensive onslaught, and she's being stymied by Liz Carmouche. Under 90 seconds now left. This is the area that we've normally seen Liz Carmouche in a lot of her fights where she starts to dominate her opponents because she's physically strong. She's tough, she hits hard, she's got good knees. Just physically, she can move her opponent where she wants a lot of the time. Well, nine of uh, Porto's 11 previous fights have gone to the judges and with a minute left, it appears Another judge's decision on the horizon as Carmouche continues to pin Porto along the fence, has some separation, doesn't throw the knee. Collar tie, and there's an elbow on the exit. That was a nice clean elbow on that exit. We are down to the final 30 seconds. Is Liz Carmouche and uh, Vanessa Porto. That was a nice kick. Going at it here in the flyweight division, and now Carmouche beginning to put it together as Porto seeks a final minute takedown that was blocked by Carmouche. We are down to the final 10 seconds. And this matchup between the number two ranked flyweight Liz Carmouche and Bellator newcomer Vanessa Porto goes to the judges. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we'll go to the scorecards. Your first judge, David Torelli, scores the fight 29 to 28, while judges Doug Crosby and Eric Colon both see it the same, 30 to 27. All have it for the winner by unanimous decision, Liz Gorilla Carmouche. Liz Carmouche improves to 15 and seven, two and zero oh in the Bellator MMA flyweight division as she defeats the debuting Vanessa Porto. Bellator MMA now presents the co-main event of the evening. Three five-minute rounds in the flyweight division. And now live on Showtime, we introduce the blue corner. At five foot six, Wang Yang, 125 and one quarter pounds. Her undefeated professional record, 10 wins, no losses, one draw, fighting out of Tokyo, Japan, Judo, Beauty Beast, Kano Watanabe. And across the cage, her adversary, front side of the red corner, at five foot six, weighing in 125 and one half pounds. The two weight class former title challenger tonight brings 15 professional victories, seven defeats by way of Okinawa, Japan. She fights out of San Diego, California, Liz Gorilla Carmouche. In charge, your referee, Kevin McDonald. Thompson's been saying it all night. There are wins and there are performances. Liz especially needs both. Boy, Liz Carmouche yeah, she did. coming out really strong, coming up forward, a lot of pressure. Nice, wrong right hand. Now an overhand right. Watanabe back curling, she's in big trouble. Liz Carmouche piling it on. Kevin McDonald taking a close look. A lot of these shots are getting in and it's over. It's over. The MMA world wanted Liz Carmouche to make a statement and did she ever. 
This car Bush has been listening to Josh Thompson in here because he said, you need to have a finish. She says, really? Let me show you what a finish is. That was just unbelievable by Liz Carmouche. Outstanding. Watch these shots. A lot of pressure in the beginning. The inside leg kick, you see it squares cut off. That left hand, right hand starts it off. She's buzzed right there. You see her starting to go back. She's not, that right hand was the one. That's the one that really started to seal the deal. Liz kept on going after it. Crushed her space a little bit. But she just started lighting her up. Good stoppage by Kevin McDonald. Great win for Liz Carmouche. Look at that shot with the right hand. That really started to buzz her. And she, she went backwards and backwards till there was no more backwards. There was only so far you can go. And when you're up against the fence and you cannot move your feet, you are in trouble. Liz Carmouche just went wild on her. Big right, left hands. That right hand was the one that made the big difference in this fight. This was an undefeated fighter that Liz Carmouche just rolled through. Ladies and gentlemen, it comes to an end. 35 seconds into round number one. The winner by knockout, Liz Guerrilla Carmouche. Ladies and gentlemen, Bellator MMA live on Showtime from Blaisdell Arena. The time has come for tonight's main event. Five five minute rounds for the Bellator Flyweight World Championship. Sanctioned by the Hawaii State Athletic Commission, Executive Officer James Skizuski. And now, from here in Honolulu, we introduce the Blue Corner. At five foot six, weighing in 125 pounds even, the two time, two weight class world title challenger tonight in her first Bellator world title fight stands with 16 professional victories, seven defeats. Ladies and gentlemen, the U.S. Marine Corps veteran fighting out of Okinawa, Japan, by way of San Diego, California, the challenger, Liz Gorilla. And across the cage, the champion fights out of the red corner at five foot six, weighing in 124.8 pounds. In her second title defense, she enters with an undefeated professional record of 12 and 0 from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Introducing the defending Bellator flyweight world champion, Juliana Velasquez. In charge, Lance Corporal, United States Marine Corps Infantry, Mike Beltran. You've been on the rules already. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Talk goes now if you want. At the sound of the bell, come on out. Have your business, ladies. Let's go. This special night culminates with a battle for the gold, the Bellator MMA Flyweight Championship. Juliana Velasquez set to defend it for the second time against Liz Carmouche, who is five and two since she dropped down to 125 in December of 2017. Bell, round one, scheduled for five. And remember, it took just over half a minute for Carmouche to punch her way to this championship opportunity in her last fight, and she walks down the champion early. This is what, exactly what I would expect to see out of Liz Carmouche. You cannot sit there and wait. You've got to create these situations. You've got to create your opportunities. Don't get into a long-range battle with Juliana. Press her forward. Like what I'm seeing out of Liz right now. It was Carmouche's first victory via form of knockout since she stopped Jessica Andrade in July of 2013. So long time coming as Velasquez fires off a left hand inside. Low kick by Carmouche. Another kick to the leg. And all of those by the kicks, challenger. All of those kicks, Moro, are needed by Liz. She needs to continue to attack those legs. Slow down that movement of Juliana. Minute has elapsed. 
In the first round, the challenger continues to stalk the champion. The moves from the South Boss stance, but moving back to orthodox, and you'll see both stances on display. It's a calf kick, another calf kick by the challenger, and Ramouche closes the distance in the exchange shots. Juliana's always very heavy on that front leg, so it's gonna be there for Liz to attack. And both are counter fighters at heart, and Velasquez showing some crisp counter punching here against Carmouche. She is, but notice the exits by Liz. She's landing that last shot, which is important. Juliana already showed not a whole lot of fighters like to fight off their back foot or actually are good at it. She showed against Denise Kielholz, she can do it and she can land good shots. So this is not unusual for her as far as moving backwards, but Liz needs to take that and make it uncomfortable. Oh, and there, Carmouche lands a left on the champion's chin. And there, the champion fires off a one-two combination from the southpaw stance that scored. Champions land a couple of very clean, straight left hands. Of course, Valentina Shevchenko is saw fun. Wow. Carmouche owns a victory over her the last time they met. That proved to be a big problem, and uh, Carmouche talked about facing a, a southpaw in Velasquez and the, the adjustments and the changes she needs to make. Of course, longtime training partner with Alima Lay McFarlane and would love to gain a measure of revenge for her training partner, who of course is back at it tomorrow night here in her home turf. Very nice straight left hand landed by Juliana there, but still relentless pressure coming forward by Liz but the output needs to start to just start notching it up. Yeah, Carmouche has thrown 30 strikes, landed 10. Velasquez, 8 of 17, according to our statistical department. There's a nice jab to the midsection by Velasquez. Doesn't follow up with the left and then backpedals, resets, but the pressure continues to be administered by Carmouche. Liz is starting to get into a little bit of she's following. You don't want to follow, you want to cut off that ring. Tactical opening, four minutes of this championship fight. Leg kick by Carmouche, another jab to the body by Velasquez. Faints with the kick. Carmouche's landed quite a few more kicks. That's a real difference in this round right now that I'm seeing. Yep, 10 of 11 compared to one of three for the champion, John. But the champion, Velasquez, putting together a good textbook one-two from the southpaw stance. But the big thing, she's got to get past the one-two into the three-four. Yes. High kick by Carmouche. Both of them have to be careful, tuck those chins. 10 seconds, Carmouche catches the kick, clinches with Velasquez, both known for savvy work within the clinch, but the clock will run out in the opening round. She needs to get back to it. And Velasquez might want to dip into that arsenal as well as we've seen in the past. Of course, she is a, a Judica. Carmouche is a 10th. Oh, oh wow! Can't buy Juliana. And dropping Carmouche in the second round, the first knockdown of the fight. And now another one-two by the champion. That was a clean, straight down the pipe left hand by Juliana. And Carmouche bouncing right back to her face, but she has tasted the power. Going upstairs with a high kick. Velasquez. 12 0 with four knockouts. Carmouche has tasted the power, now looking for the takedown. That's her first takedown attempt, and she secures it. Very nice job by Liz, and this is something she needs to do. Good job of trying to lace the legs here. She's trying to figure four of those. We'll see if she can get to it. She does. 
which he needs to get Juliana's back off of that fence material onto the canvas. Sounds easy to do, but it's very difficult. There's a whole lot of technique going on from both women right here. Juliana to stay in that upright position. Liz trying to create pressure, but not get to the point where it's so light that all of a sudden Juliana can start to pull her feet out. See Liz reaching out for that right arm. She's got the wrist. She needs to control that, get that elbow now off the ground, and she can use her head as a third arm to drive Juliana towards that canvas. Strength from Liz Carmusha on display, managing to keep that right arm neutralized and taking small steps, trying to move up. Little tiny moves. Make big differences. You see her trying to get that, lace that arm. Now she's got that arm where she can hold it with the right arm. The champion not panicking. Velasquez up against the fence. And now the pass by Carmouche coming up on the midpoint of the second round. A lot of pressure by Liz right now. Driving straight down into Juliana, keeping her in that position. Opens up with that left hand. Remember, she's got that right hand holding onto the right arm of Juliana. Velasquez up against the fence, going to get back to her feet and does so. Just over two minutes left in the second round, so Velasquez back to her feet, but it's still Carmouche putting the pressure on her, putting all her weight against her on the fence and delivers a knee to the inside thigh. Another knee by Carmouche to the champion. The champion's in there with that wizard. Many times Judoka's love the wizard even oh. over the underhook. An old school veteran at Arthur. The foot stops. And every time we see foot stops, we gotta give a shout out to the king of the streets, Marco Huas. I think it's in the contract, John. <laughs> a minute and a half remaining in the second. Carmouche doing whatever it takes to keep the champion off balance. And, but it's champion now, Velasquez has Carmouche against the fence. Nice job by Juliana to switch the position. You see Liz digging that underhook, beautiful knee to the body. And the clinch is an area where a lot of pundits uh, were interested in seeing what would materialize, and we're seeing it unfold here with just over a minute left in the second round. Well, like we talked about it, Liz Carmouche is possibly the strongest 125-pound female fighter you'll find, and I think Juliana is second. So they're both used to being able to kind of bully their way with the other women in the and, division. <laughs> and they're jockeying for they're position here. Exactly they're taking that. turns here, and there's clinch battle, final minute of the second round. And again, every taxing second, and Velasquez showing she's uh, adept at delivering a foot stomp as well, and knee strike by Carmouche, and the trip takedown by Velasquez. With 20 seconds left, Velasquez secures her first takedown. Carmouche very comfortable on her back, of course, with training 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu Black Belt, Eddie Bravo and company. Her first title defense, and now trying to hold off the challenge of Liz Carmouche, round number three. Calf kick by Carmouche. Big John has it even, heading into the third. Of course, the fight would become official after this third round. We know what happened a week ago in the final of the $1 million light heavyweight World Grand Prix between Corey Anderson and the champion Vadim Nemkov, resulting in a no contest after an accidental head clash. And hopefully they will conclude that tournament. Bantamweight Grand Prix getting underway tomorrow, but Velasquez with a left hand here in her flyweight title defense. 
Carmouche has to be careful, John, when she comes in because her chin yeah, is exposed. Up. Absolutely, sir. Her chin's starting to get a little high when she comes in as she's throwing her shots. And you're starting to see a change in the momentum of this fight. Look at who's moving forward now. Yes, the champion. Look who's Velasquez. on her back foot. Again, Liz going after that leg. I think she needs to continue to work that leg as much as possible. Numbers are interesting in terms of punches landed and thrown. Big edge for Velasquez, as we talked about. A big edge for Carmouche when it comes to kicks. And it's that left hand. Liz is having a hard time figuring out the straight left hand by Juliana. She's setting it up well, and she's getting Liz into her range, throwing that jab out and following it up. Nothing fancy, nothing special, but she's being effective. Double jab, then delivers the left. And we talked about total kicks landed. Cavalcade for Carmouche, 19 of 23 compared to one of four for Velasquez, but Velasquez has been content to be a headhunter. And as you mentioned, that left hand has been key. That left oh, beautiful and beautiful job. catching and that kick. And delivers the left. And you notice how she caught it with the right, moved it off to set up the straight left hand. Beautiful, Beautiful technique. technique. <laughs> <laughs> Midway point of the third round, another left hand from Velasquez, flashing the jab again, going down the middle, and Carmouche has to take her head off center line, try to find a way to navigate a path to the champion, use angles. There's a kick, and lands cap get by the challenger. Oh, you're right, John. She's now on her back foot. It's Velasquez putting the pressure on the challenger. Yeah, Velasquez has become the sniper here. She's just setting up that left hand. She's looking for her opportunities to land it. Carmouche sometimes upsets her balance, upsets her positioning with that low leg kick, but not enough to stop what Juliana's starting to set up. There's another solid left hand that connects for the champion Velasquez. That was a clean, straight shot. Liz really needs to start to change this up because she's starting to eat that left hand repeatedly, and now you're seeing Juliana, as we talked about before, she will go downstairs to the body, set it up, and come back up top. Velasquez left hand. The result of the long takedown, the knockdown, but now a takedown by Carmouche. Important takedown for Carmouche. Look, she was starting to lose that stand-up, clearly lose it. She needed to change the aspect of this fight. That's what she's doing with this takedown. Let's see what she can do. She's only got a minute left. Yep, and it's her second takedown of the fight. The champion delivering some elbows from the bottom. And right now, she got the takedown. Great technique, got it there. She hasn't thrown one strike, and Juliana, although they're from her back, she's throwing the elbows. She's the one that's being the aggressor. Got to be careful about those elbow strikes to the back of the head, but they're that's legal. Right. That's right to the top yep. of the head. That is clean. Under 30 seconds left in the third round. Close guard of Velasquez. Wide base by Carmouche, but her posture being controlled effectively by the champion. Speaking of the champion, we are headed to the championship rounds of our Bellator 278 main event. A little can opener action from Carmouche as we go to round number four. Here heading into round four, the biggest adjustment you would like to see each make beginning with the champion. With the champion, I, what I want to do is don't allow the takedown. You're controlling this now in the stand up. Oh, and there's there a it knockdown is. with the left hand. A little bit off balance, I think, also, yep, also. What, what caused it. And but for Carmouche. Carmouche, you have got to work into this clinch area and now work to get this to the ground. You've got to get to the top position. But when you get there, you have to be busy. Boy, 
Man is doing a, doing a great job of raising that underhook with her right arm. That's what was able to turn Liz to get her back against the cage. Little techniques, little things that make differences. Right now, Juliana with double unders. Velasquez, 35, didn't start training MMA until the age of 27. Undefeated, including seven wins under the Bellator MMA banner. Eats a couple of knees from the challenger, Carmouche, but then Velasquez turns Carmouche, and they continue to balance. There's a judoka going for a judo throw takedown, but defended by Carmouche. Not really defending the fence helped a lot in that one, but it was... Well, it didn't result uh, in the takedown. Uh, she's getting herself back to her feet. But you can really see a difference right now in their effectiveness in the fight. Juliana is starting to be the one that is, for the most part, starting to control the position, starting to control where this fight's going to be. Well, we've seen in the past where Luz Carmouche comes on late to take rounds, and that may be... The case here now, under three minutes left in the fourth, and again, she eats that left hand down the middle, need, middle needs to take her head off center line, tries to attack the legs of the champ. She's leaning back, and you don't want to be in that position because you can only lean back so far that Juliana makes the proper adjustment and brings her feet into play. That shot's going to land. She's going to be off balance, and she'll end up on the ground. Another left hand, this one to the body of Carmouche. That's the midway point of the fourth. One, two combinations forced for the champion. And now Carmouche storms the champion. And it's the champion now utilizing footwork and being able to move to her right. Two minutes left in the round. Good timing by Liz to take advantage of that left hand that Juliana threw, but she ends up, now she's got Juliana's back against the cage. She's got to work for this takedown. on the fence and it's this gritty battle for positioning and Carlos spins Velasquez to the canvas. Caught that leg, controlled it with that spin. Beautiful takedown by Liz. Not much time left though. 40 seconds left to work from side control and she definitely needs to up the attack. 30 seconds left in the round. She's trying to neutralize the Right arm of the champion, and now looking to deliver some ground and pound. Crucifix position. Short elbow strikes. There's a couple good ones in there. Referee stops the fight. We've got a new flyweight champion. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end. Four minutes, 47 seconds into round number four. The winner by knockout, and now the new Bellator Flyweight World Champion, Liz Gorilla Carmouche. Live on Showtime, Bellator MMA now presents tonight's double main event beginning with five five-minute rounds in the rematch for the Bellator Flyweight World Championship. This evening's world title fights both sanctioned by the Mohican Tribe Department of Athletic Regulation, Chairman James Gessner, President of Sports and Entertainment, Mr. Tom Cantone, and supervising at cage side tonight 
Mr. Mike Mazzulli. And now, first, introducing the blue corner. At five foot six, weighing in 124.2 pounds, determined to reclaim the title. The former flyweight world champion enters with 12 professional victories and that single defeat. She hails from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, presenting the challenger, Juliana Velasquez. And across the cage, the champion fights out of the red corner. At five foot six, weighing in 124.8 pounds in her first defense of her first world title, the veteran professional stands with 17 victories, seven defeats. By way of Okinawa, Japan, she fights out of San Diego, California. She is the defending Bellator flyweight world champion, Liz Gorilla. And the referee in charge, Kevin McDonald. Fighters to the center, please. All right, ladies, this is five rounds under the unified rules for the flyweight belt. We went over those rules in the back. I want a good fight, clean fight. If you'd like, you can touch gloves now. If not, back to your corner. Best of luck to you. It's all about not leaving any doubts. It's all about the Bellator flyweight championship belt. Liz Carmouche, finally a champion in her fourth opportunity at a major MMA title. Juliana Velasquez wants to avenge the lone blemish of Ready her fight? career. Ready to fight? Let's go. First of a scheduled five rounds for the gold, and immediately Carmouche on the attack, looking to change levels. Just like I pointed out, Trust that space. That's what Liz Carbus just did. Getting into this clinch situation, she believes that she has an advantage here. And she showed it in the last fight. Let's see if she can get Juliana to the ground with this. been training with coach Charles Martinez in Virginia Beach uh, Liz Carmouche moving away from traditional camp and her busy home life focusing on maintaining her hold on the gold a minute gone here in the first round and the crowd of Mohegan Sun Arena already impatient Velasquez began training judo at four, is a black belt, former Brazilian national judo champion. Used her judo skills in their first meeting, but right now just pinned to the fence by Carmouche. She is pinned to the fence, you know, she's got that underhook. You can see her right arm with the underhook. Liz with her right arm on the other side with an underhook. This is a 50-50 position, but it's Liz that wants this fight here. Juliana does not, so that means that Juliana right now cannot effectively get herself free from Liz. And now Velasquez switches places with Carmouche. They continue to battle for position. Nice head position Control. by Velasquez. Velasquez trying to pummel here, got the under looking for the body lock. He's got the double unders right now. Left hand upstairs by Velasquez looking to create space. Overhook employed by Carmouche. So a close quarters here in the first half of the first round. Well, I know it looks like, oh, there's not a lot going on. There is so much energy being spent by both ladies right now. There's a lot of pushing and pulling, and you're, you're putting weight into areas and having to balance your body out. 
this can be exhausting. This is going to have an effect on both of them as this fight progresses. Notice Juliana's winning the battle of the heads right here. Notice where her head's at. She's able to push over on Liz, keeping her head, her jawline turned. Watch it. Watch the blow. Coming up on one minute, 30 seconds remaining in the opening round. Vasquez looking for a nice foot sweep, unable to make it work. At this point, she's got the double under, so she's the one in control of the position right now. Final minute of the first round. Velasquez just four for four. She's 100%, but she's just thrown and landed four punches compared to Karmush being credited with 32 of 36, but it's really all about the position and control. And, and you cage. wonder about those numbers, John. I see the look on your face. I haven't seen that many shots. But. Stop! Stop! Great! Karmush again. Attempting the takedown. I see this is, it, well defended by Velasquez. May not be liked by the fans, but this is a smart game plan by Liz Karmush. Getting a takedown. Very nicely done. And Karmush says her wrestling is something that she feels stands out against any opponent she's ever faced. And she ends the round in full mount. We begin round number two. And Karmush takes the center of the cage, but there's the linear striking of the former champion, the Southpaw Velasquez, the one and two, forced to retreat though. And again, pressure being put on by Karmush, snatches a single and puts Velasquez back on the mat. Smart, smart move by Liz Karmush. Look, she's putting a lot of pressure. She's taking a chance, but she's got to take that chance against someone who's got better stand-up than her overall. And she has the advantage she can get this to the ground. You saw her go to mount. Yep. In the first round at the end, I think that there was time on the clock. Short knee strikes being delivered by the champion Carmouche, underhook by Velasquez, and then she turns the tables on. Karmouche, but it's been a battle of position, jockeying, and as you mentioned, John, a lot of energy being expended in their body shots by Velasquez. There's a knee delivered by the former champ. That was a nicely placed knee. And the one two lands for Velasquez. And there's Carmouche shooting again. Controlling, trying to control the legs. Velasquez will attempt to wall walk. Carmouche two for four in the takedown department. Here, this is the battle. You can see Liz Carmouche try to bring her hips off of that fence. Nice job of lacing the legs up. Now she's going to be able to keep Juliana on the ground. Now she's just got to decide I want to tip her to the right or to the left. Try to drive her back to the canvas. Watch the short elbows inside. Liz does a really nice job of bringing the hand over the head and then slicing the elbow in. Liz Carmouche just embracing that grind against Velasquez. I guess this is where the fans wish uh, Dan Brugliano was the referee, John. <laughs> Might be. 
a little bit quickly standing up, but even Dan in this position. I'm joking. I, I like Dan. I know what you mean. He's take, got control. I mean, there's no way, right? And you know, there's a lot of things that can happen for this. It only takes one small mistake, and all of a sudden, big advantages are taken. So you don't want to take a fighter out when they have an advantage of the position. This is what you should see Liz do. Start to move herself up. right into. Nice job. There, right into Fuma. Well done by the champion, Liz Carmouche. Not only well done, so physically strong, strong. to do that. And now, with a minute and a half remaining in the second, can Carmouche capitalize on this dominant position? Looking to bring that leg up and over. It's an S mount. Can't see exactly where her leg's at, but it should be by the head of Juliana. She's trying to separate it. Short elbow there by Carmouche. She's got that leg right under. She can go into an arm bar. Three submission wins for the champion. Two via rear naked choke and one via arm bar. Her first submission back in May of 2010. It's a lot of pressure on that. There you go. There's a tap. No doubt this time. Liz Carmouche retains the flyweight championship with a submission win over Juliana Velasquez, who suffers her second consecutive loss and taps out for the first time in her career. Take a look, and this is what we were talking about. You have a distinct advantage. You saw that in the first fight. Bring the fight back to that place. That's what she did throughout this. Take a look at what occurs here. You can see when she brought that leg up, I know she's looking towards that arm bar. She gets that position. Look at the pressure she starts to put. Her hips are engaged. A lot of pressure as she pulls back on that. The head is stuck in a position with her legs. Beautifully done by Liz Carmouche. A lot of torque on that elbow at this point. Now she brings that weight back forward. Man. Beautifully done submission. Ladies and gentlemen, inside the Bellator cage, it comes to an end of four minutes, 24 seconds into round number two. The tap by way of the arm bar by submission. She is still Bellator flyweight world champion, Liz Gorilla. And the champion will get to enjoy her moment there with Bellator President Scott Coker. Ladies and gentlemen, live on Showtime, the time has come here at Bellator's fight for our heroes for the main event of the evening. Five five-minute rounds for the Bellator Flyweight World Championship. Sanctioned by the Hawaii State Athletic Commission, Executive Officer James Skizuski. And now, here in Honolulu, Hawaii, we welcome first and introduce the Blue Corner. At 5'4", weighing in 126.2 pounds, her professional record 13 wins, 7 losses, 1 draw from Fremont, California. She fights out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the head of Vitamin D. And across the cage, the champion tonight fights out of the red corner at five foot six, weighing in 125 pounds even, defending her world title for the second time. She enters with 18 professional victories, seven defeats by way of Okinawa, Japan. She fights out of San Diego, California. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States Marine Corps combat veteran and reigning Bellator Flyweight World Champion, Liz Gorilla Carmouche. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge, Kerry Hatley. All right, here we go, Deanna. Here we go, Liz. All right, ladies, five rounds for the Bellator Women's Flyweight Championship of the World. Conduct yourself like champions at all times. Obey the rules we went over in the dressing room at all times and obey my commands at all times. Fight hard, touch them up if you're going to. 
Here we go. Let's go for it. <laughs> okay, a little confusion. <laughs> I don't know if that was confusion as much as Liz Carmouche taking personally uh -huh. Deanna Bennett not making weight for this fight. That's it. That what is on the line for Liz Carmouche. She didn't have to put the title on the line, but that's what champions do. Deanna Bennett can't win it, but she can make a statement. Gianni, well, Gianni will get us going. Our ladies, good job. Your hard work pays off right here. Ready, ready, let's go to work. Liz Carmouche first came to Bellator. People wanted to see that dynamic finish. Her fights were not dynamic until she got in with Conor Watanabe. Oh! And look at her go right into trying to trap Bennett. Liz Carmouche talked. Now, Deanna Bennett missed weight by a mile for the first fight. And Liz Carmouche talked about making her pay for it. Well, this thought it actually had an impact in the fight. I thought she thought it made it, you know, much more difficult on her in certain situations that she had weight. She did not go through the struggle of trying to lose weight so much as the way she felt about it. So she was not happy. And then when this one happened, it was just another just jab at her, in her opinion, that you didn't make weight for a championship fight. It doesn't make sense to me. And another reason that she takes it so personally is that she's probably more comfortable at 135. At 125, Liz, Liz is. And so she's putting in all that work. And then. Absolutely. Deanna decided to try to push her back towards the cage. Liz can use this position to get herself either back to, the, to her feet if she wants, try to get her back up on the cage. Right now, you see she's trying to have wrist control, trying to push that arm through to bring up that leg, see if she can look towards a triangle. trying to utilize some ground and pound here, trying to hit to the body, bring the elbows up towards the head. Liz really controlling the posture. Take a look at that left arm, hold the head. Now she's on the arms. Make sure that they can't be used. That's why you're seeing Deanna try to go towards those short elbow strikes. Nice knee shield yeah. inside. By Liz. Liz has been working here this entire time to try to change position. Which tells you how good Deanna is yeah. with her base and being able to control the position. Liz is doing a lot of good work. Deanna's able to stop all of it. Right now, she's getting herself out of position. Very nice work by Liz. Deanna Bennett says she showed Liz Carmers too much respect in that first fight and almost gave away that first round in which it was Liz putting on all the pressure, Liz Carmouche against the fence. It's going back to the close guard, just trying to crush the posture of Deanna Bennett, limit what she can do offensively. Side. See that foot into that hip junction area. That's not easy to deal with. Deanna doing a good job bringing her hips down heavy. You see those legs bent like that. That's her trying to keep herself from being elevated. But this is going to give Deanna a lot of confidence that she was able to keep Liz on the entire her round. Yeah. And this was very important as far as. Her keys towards work, working towards a victory. This is a big moment. Her 
remember in that first fight in the second round, and what's in the back of Deanna Bennett's mind is Liz Carmouche rolling out of a position like this into a heel hook. And Liz has been hunting for a lot of different things. Deanna's been able to stop all yeah, of them. Yeah, she has. It's a nice attempt right now. You see the figure four by Liz really doing a nice job, and if there was more time, she might come out on the back. Stop, stop, easy up. All right, here we go, round two, ready? Let's go to work. Carmouche has won five straight, arguably each more impressive than the previous one. Including the win three years ago over Deanna Bennett. It was funny, that early stoppage that got her the title in this building a year ago. I've always felt this, that the winner sometimes in the quote-unquote early stoppage almost gets shortchanged. Absolutely. Because it's not like they... They, they didn't do they, anything wrong. Pitbull and Michael Chandler. Maybe if that fight, it was it stopped early? Probably. If that fight goes a little farther, maybe Pippa wins in an even more dominant fashion, and nobody ever considers that. It just seems like a tainted victory when it's not. Well, there's no doubt about it. If you take a look at that victory, it was a year ago now for Liz. Yeah, it takes away from what, you know, look, she did her job. Right. She did exactly what she was supposed to do, but just the way it occurs, it can kind of take away from it. So it's, it takes a puts a bad taste in your mouth for the fight. Better shots from Liz Carmouche in that last exchange here. Early in round two. And if you're looking, Liz, as far as her hand, when she shoots out her jab, it's quick. And she falls it up with the right hand. She needs to rely on just believing it. Well, made a mistake right she here. She did, and Bennett. Able to turn back towards the dominant position again. Liz still has that arm, but she's lost that position. So the fight went to the ground in the first round in sort of an uncharacteristic, overly aggressive mistake by Liz. Yep. She tried to throw that wild. What's the back? There you go. Wild kick, which you don't really see from her. She's still holding on to that Kimura grip on the left arm of Deanna Bennett. That can get her the reversal if she's able to utilize it. You're seeing Deanna bring that hand to the inside. See it against her hip line there. She keeps it inside that. It's never going to be a problem for her. She's got control, even though both hands are really on. Nice work by Deanna Bell. Right, this is good stuff. Herself back to her feet. <laughs> Wouldn't expect it. Liz Carbouche has made more mistakes here in the first two rounds than Deanna Bennett. Long way to go. Low calf kick by Liz. And it set that up. That shot doesn't land without the low calf kick first. No, it doesn't. Very well done by Liz. Came in with almost a Superman type punch. Both connecting. Now she has Deanna in the defensive position against the cage. And in a close round two, that's a significant turn of events. She's getting on the single leg right now. That's good. That's a tough ask. Which is what the problem with Liz has got a Khmer grip on her right arm. And that's why we're kind of stuck in that position. Liz going to what we call 100% here. 
trying to pull that arm away. Once again, Deanna Bennett coming out in the top position, which is crucial to her getting this win here tonight. This is a really close round two. Stop, stop, easy up. Even through two? I have it even through two. I thought, you know, both rounds, you look, I thought Deanna Bennett definitely got the first round pretty easy. That was a close round. I, I thought that the heavier shots were landed by Liz. There wasn't a whole lot of damage done in any of the ground positions. They gave the second round to Liz Carter. Deanna Bennett is a fascinating individual to spend time with. One of the things that... One of the things that's really helping Deanna right now is take a look at she's got that little the head movement, little side to side. Liz's head is right on the center line. Yeah, it is. Come what I was getting at is you think of her as sort of, you know, she's this happy-go-lucky kind of fun walk, but she's fighting the more disciplined fight here, which is the last thing you would expect if you knew these two people. Yeah, I agree with you. Deanna's really using a lot of movement. Little movement of her head, side to side at times. That was, a, shot. that was a clean right hand landed by Liz. See, and right there, you saw Liz plant her feet. She needs to slide her feet towards her opponent to make sure that that shot lands. This time, Liz Carmouche does not want to give up that takedown. Well, she doesn't. Give up a couple easy in the first two rounds. Yeah, I bet it's got her hands locked. It does. Very well done by Deanna Bennett. Really good stuff. Nice, systematically put herself in a position. You saw when she put her hand over towards the head. Liz knew she had to let go of what she had. Half guard position for Deanna Bennett. As the drama builds and the challenger starts imposing her will, we remind you that she cannot win the title here tonight. She missed weight. If Deanna Bennett wins this fight, the title becomes vacant. A lot of people aren't going to understand that Liz Carmouche has the, the basically the ability to say, okay, well, it's not for the title, but she doesn't have a title defense. She wanted the title defense. That puts the title on the line. That means that, yes, she can lose it. Deanna can't win it. Tomorrow, Conor Watanabe and Alima Leigh McFarlane, the top two contenders in the division, will face each other. Bennett trying to throw a monkey wrench into those plants. Deanna Bennett really doing a fantastic job of technically putting her body in the right position, being heavy in base. You see Liz use a lot of different techniques to try to move her out of the positions. She has not been able to do it once. Bennett really showing her grappling prowess. After 24 hours of criticism about the lack of discipline and missing weight, and rightly so, she has fought an unbelievably disciplined fight to this point. Yes, she has. She's done everything she's supposed to do in a fight. She's utilized her striking to get into these clinch positions, get the takedowns. And when she's been in the top position, you see her working to do damage. Anna Bennett drove to Connecticut to watch the Liz Carmouche fight, the rematch. Juliana Velasquez. Watched as Liz Carmouche called out everybody but her. 
tried to raise her hand and said, I'm here, what about me? She's front and center right now. A lot of people don't realize that Deanna started taking on really good fighters early, early in her career. She's got big wins against, you know, champions like Juliana Pena, against Jennifer Maya. She's got big wins. She can fight. And she's just gotten better, especially since she's been here in Bellator. She's really improved everything about her game. Not only her striking, but her grappling has gotten better, too. She is winning this fight through three rounds. Stop, stop, stop. I think you and I, John, so, certainly saw round two for Liz Carmouche, but that doesn't mean everybody did. Oh, it could be that Deanna Bennett could be up three rounds here because she definitely won the first and the third round. Good kick by Carmouche. Deanna Bennett off balance. What does Liz want to do? Liz is looking towards a 10-finger. Gia Team Choke trying to drive her arms back into the throat while using her hips to push down on the head of Deanna Bennett. I don't think that she has her hands set in the right position, though. She's getting up position again. It's a lot of pressure on Deanna. You can see her through there. Keeping not her hips high. Her, but by keeping her hips high, it's relieving some of the pressure on her neck. needs to keep that leg to the outside there. It's well done. Deanna back on the single leg. And in these positions, elbows are a big part of defending that takedown. You're seeing Liz, she keeps on going towards that Kimura grip. That elbow will keep Deanna from wanting to be in that position. Clean elbow strikes by Liz Carmouche right now. Deanna holding on to the single leg. <laughs> hear the crack of that elbow against her skull. Carmouche trying to type that left arm of Deanna Bennett here. That's a better, much better look at what's going on. Well, she's also, basically she's in a topside crucifix almost yeah. here. She's got the, the left arm of Deanna between her legs controlled. Got the right arm. See how she's got her arm inside of that so she can pull it out when she wants. Not a good position right now for Deanna Bennett. She's taking a lot of damage here, even though she's at the top. That's a smart move of her trying to step over the leg. But there's no room for her to step over. No, the, the entire thing is that cage is keeping her stuck. Deanna's got the right idea of trying to come around to the backside of Liz. Head still down low. You're going to see Liz trying to work that Kimura, but she's lost it. She does not have her hand set up there. Liz Carmouche knows she doesn't have it. Dragged her back into that spot. A beautiful work by Deanna Bennett to try to work her way through it. Nice but job of Liz controlling that position. She was almost too high. Sucked her hips back. Now she's on the back. And suddenly in a mount position without much room to work. Well, she's in an arm triangle position. She can make that work possibly. That's a much better look at her head on the side of the elbow of Deanna Bennett. Yep. There she goes climbing, you see, she's trying to get that to the side. Now the problem is that cage can take away her ability. But Liz Carmouche, like I said earlier, so physically strong, she can put a lot of squeeze on here.
is trying to control. Yeah, she's having That's problems. it. There was just too much time left in the round and nowhere for Deanna Bennett to go. Ladies and gentlemen, in tonight's main event, the end comes officially at four minutes, 29 seconds into round number four. The tap by way of an arm triangle choke by submission. She is still the Bellator Flyweight World Champion, Liz Gorilla.